Now, a couple of months ago in Phone Show 416, I covered QWERTY input options for smartphone users, and I made reference to this, the Cosmo Communicator. I did a hands-on with the Cosmo in the pub before COVID-19 kicked off in Phone Show 380, but that was a pre-release unit. This has been out for just over a full year now, but Planet Computer's PR chat pointed out it had just received a long, long overdue software update from July 2020 right through to January 2021 here. Android 9, but Android 11 is planned for this for the summer. Interestingly, skipping over Android 10 completely, I really did not know this was possible, but well done if they pull it off. So it's a classic communicator in that it's landscape, it's QWERTY, it's largish, it's metal, and it's heavy at over 300 grams. It's 100% geared towards writing an email, and it's spectacularly compromised in all other areas because of how good it is at its primary functions, but I'll come to that. The physical design is really very clever indeed. The metal cladding folds away at the back as you open the clamshell to act as a stand, angling the keyboard and providing stability. In much the same way as this, the previous Gemini, except that this time the metal has to incorporate folding away from the brand new, for the Cosmo, cover controls and display. Now the Gemini was limited in terms of phone use because the only way to see who was calling was by decoding the LED sequence built into the frame. Now this adds a small AMOLED display showing caller name, time, date, notification icons and so on. Plus it's touch enabled and you can swipe between major notifications or even to a panel of tools including camera control and a torch. And below this display is a capacitive fingerprint sensor for unlocking in Google Pay authorization with push button controls on either edge, letting you accept or back out of whatever's happening on the cover display. Then above all this are a 24 megapixel camera and LED flash, of which more later. It's all sleekly implemented and the Cosmo really isn't that much, well, that much thicker than the Gemini, while adding a lot more functionality. But it's opening up the Cosmo Communicator that really impresses. You've seen this full mechanical keyboard before on the Scion Series 5 range in the 1990s and on the Gemini, and it's as good as it ever was. In fact, I think it's now better. To a writer like me, it's like, it's like coming home, a full five rows, including numbers, and it's backlit. Each key has its own LED, apparently. Impressive. So picture the scene coming home from an event in the evening on a train or a plane post COVID. Others are struggling with laptops, Bluetooth keyboards or just an on-screen keyboard. You calmly open up the Cosmo and have a laptop like form factor and backlit keyboard. It's a possible game changer. As with the Gemini, it's Android in, well, landscape mode, and that can be a bit iffy. Android has been rubbish at adapting to landscape for years now. This really isn't Planet Computer's fault. With so many Android apps assuming a portrait UI most of the time, you're often left on the Cosmo swiping content in a small landscape window between apparently oversized top and bottom toolbars. But this isn't necessarily a problem because it all depends on what you do on the Cosmo. Planet supplies a handy shortcut bar. Anyone else remember extras on the Scion? <laughs> with controls for a good number of planet written or commissioned applications that work really well in landscape and with the QWERTY keyboard. So the desktop itself, app names below icons, which you don't always get in landscape with Android, Airmail, a generic IMAP and Exchange email client, the utterly wonderful agenda, again channeling the original Scion. This even has the fabled year view. You've got notes, and finally, data. Uh, yes, the name and concept lifted from the Scion. Again, a free-form database, super flexible and the cornerstone of many people's lives over the last two decades. I'm still getting calls from people with Scion asking them to help with their 1990s Scion databases on which they run their lives. So if you live in these applications, plus Word and Excel, also on the customizable Shortcut bar, Android's own landscape limitations might be kept to a minimum. Might. Just be aware that things go a bit pear-shaped when opening up generic social media and utility applications. Now, bigger limitations crop up in terms of some of the hardware compromises on the Cosmo. Everything, literally everything else, is affected to some degree by the need to design around the sumptuous keyboard and clamshell hinge system. 
The screen itself is LCD and has huge side bezels, not something one expects to see on a £600 plus smartphone in 2021. LCD is actually fine for the core productivity use case, but you won't enjoy media much on the Cosmo. The other reason why media is a no-go here is that Planet's electronic design has wired up the stereo speakers out of phase, just as on the Gemini. Now this is a complete facepalm moment since every single Gemini and Cosmo that has ever been made has had this issue and seemingly no one at the company ever spotted the problem in testing. And now it's too late since all Cosmos have been made and Planet is moving on. It's a bit weedy and the stereo sounds funny, but now by deliberately playing music section encoded out of phase by cancelling out the out of phase speakers, you get this. And this is how the speakers could have sounded. Better bass, better fidelity and properly centred. And then as the music section goes back in phase, oh, we get the weedy out of phase stereo again. Ah! It beggars belief, really, and it's a shame, really, since the angling up of the screen when opened would have been so handy for watching media and enjoying some decent sound. He is hoping that the upcoming Astro Slide next-gen product will finally have this fundamental flaw fixed. Also compromised in the drive to focus on the keyboard, pun intended, are the camera systems. The external cover camera has poor dynamic range, appalling low light capabilities, as shown here and precisely zero software effort exerted by Planet on this front. There are no extra camera modes beyond photo and video and no multi-frame algorithms. Again, this is effectively a smartphone camera system from a decade ago and not helped in that the front internal selfie camera is even worse. And this is a problem since a core part of productivity and work life in 2021 is video calling and remote interaction. So you'll want a usable self-facing camera and the unit here is necessarily offset. So others in Zoom meetings won't think you're looking at them. Plus we'll see a grainy video from the year 2010. I do think that Planet could have put in a much better internal camera in the Cosmo. Then this battery life, the 4220 milliamp hour cell should in theory be fine for all day use. But by default, you're out of power by tea time every day until you spot a toggle in settings. Standby intelligent power saving. You turn this on and then battery life is extended through a full day. It's the usual Android doze function, culling stuff that doesn't need to run when the Cosmo is closed. And in this case, it makes enormous sense. Why isn't this setting turned on? out of the box. Software quality control, even after a year of release experience and updates, isn't great. There are occasional missed initial keystrokes, for example. A few times a day I'd hit the first key in a new field or document and nothing. The second keystroke gets recognised, but I'm missing a character. Or I go to hit function D for the desktop and nothing. Function D again, and I'm back to the desktop as advertised. All seemingly random behaviour, but again, I'd have hoped that these glitches will be gone by now. Gripes aside, you'll want to know a few more of the basics. We're talking a MediaTek Helio P70 chipset, six gig of RAM, 128 gig of storage, plus micro SD, all very decent, plus a 3.5 mil headphone jack. Good to see, and it outputs decent quality and volume. Well done to MediaTek, I think. Plus a second type C port on the right edge, which can accept storage devices for extra flexibility, though not power. That's on the left hand jack. But next to this, you have a slightly redundant silver call handling and assistant button left over from the Gemini. You can now more easily manage calls from the cover buttons here and call a Google Assistant from a function key press on the main keyboard. I don't think I've ever reviewed such a polarized device as the Cosmo Communicator. There's so much to applaud and so much to criticise. The use case for the writer, the journalist on the move, is still compelling. And if this is you, then I suspect you've already bought or tried this or the previous Gemini, in which case you'll know how good this keyboard is and will forgive everything else that's subpar. But for the mainstream, rather obviously, it's best to look elsewhere. Hooking up a Bluetooth keyboard or even a neck stock for occasional heavy writing duties and enjoying a good display, camera, speakers and so on the rest of the time. I do wish Planet well with their ambitious update schedule for the Cosmo this year. Android 11, eh? And I wish them well for the Astro Slide. But even as a writer myself, I can't give this a, a full wholehearted recommendation. You have to go into a Cosmo purchase with your eyes open and be prepared by watching reviews like this one. Still, this keyboard, eh? It's just unique.